You might think that you know the number 200. It's the number that comes after 199. It's the number before 201. But do you really? I mean, suppose you went on a date with 200. Perhaps you and 200 embark on a romantic evening trying to survive the curse of the haunted forest. Ooh. Then here's the haunted forest, here's 200 all dressed up in Roman wear, and here's you. I contend that this day is inadvisable because you really have no idea who you've just wandered into the haunted forest with. Today, I'm going to tell you more than you could have ever wanted to know about the number 200, unless you're some sort of weird 200 pervert. The video has chapters, so you can skip around the fun facts as you please, and if you stay to the end, I might play you an acoustic version of the outro song. When 200 gets back from this thrilling date, 200 dresses down to its prime factors. The prime factorization of 200 is 2 to the power of 3 times 5 to the power of 2. Kind of a cute prime factorization, since the only digits it uses are the first three prime numbers. If you're interested not just in prime factors of 200, but just any factor more generally, 200 has quite a few. The factors of 200 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 20, 25, 40, 50, 100, and of course, 200 itself. If adding all of these factors of 200 together gives us back 2 times 200, then 200 is one of those mythical, perfect numbers. But it's not. There are 12 factors here, and when we add them all up, we get something much bigger than 400. So 200 isn't perfect, but hey, how picky can we be? We don't need a number to be perfect to go try to survive the curse of the haunted forest with it. But all hope is not lost, because 200 is pseudo-perfect. Indeed, if we take the factors of 200, 100, 50, 40, and 10, those do add to 200. And the fact that we can add up distinct factors of 200 to get 200 means that 200 is pseudo-perfect. Well, that's pretty cool. 200 is also an example of what we call a Harshad number. This is simply because the number 200 is divisible by the sum of its digits. 200 is divisible by 2, and so it's a Harshad number. These numbers were introduced and named by Indian mathematician Dattatreya Ramchandra Caprakar. He, of course, didn't name the numbers after himself. Instead, he named them after a Sanskrit word for joy giver. That's where this name came from, describing these numbers that have such power to give joy. If we took these words I've written here and wrote them backwards, we would get Revigyaj, Rof, Turksnas, Rakerpak, Ardenikmar, Ayurtadad. That means that these words don't make up a palindrome. When we reverse them, we get something different. But the number 200 is also not a palindrome. However, it is a palindrome if we write it in base 7. So 200 in base 10, well in base 7 it's equal to 404. And this, whichever order we write the digits in, is 404. To make sure you're clear on this base 7, this 4 represents 4 copies of 1, or 7 to the power of 0, this 0 represents 0 copies of 7, and this 4 represents 4 copies of 49, or 7 squared. And that's equal to 4 plus 196, or of course, 200. 200 is also a palindrome if we write it in base 9. In base 9, 200 appears as 2, 4, 2. This 2 represents 2 copies of 1, or 2 copies of 9 to the 0. This 4 is 4 copies of 9, and this 2 is 2 copies of 9 squared. Together, that's 2 plus 36 plus 162. And all of this adds to 200. And hey, speaking of squares, 200 can be written as a sum of squares. Indeed, 200 is equal to 10 squared plus 10 squared. Or if we want to use two different square numbers, we could also express it as 14 squared plus 2 squared. That's 196 plus 4. 
And four is a wonderful thing, isn't it? There's a popular recreational math problem, which dates back to 1881, called the four fours problem. It's just generally the challenge of writing a particular number using four fours and some set of pre-specified math operations. It seems like just the sort of math challenge that might go viral on the modern internet, but again, it was first introduced in 1881. Yeah, the same year that Guccio Gucci was born. If you've never seen the four fours challenge before, here's a couple quick examples. We could write one using four fours and basic operations as four plus four divided by four plus four. We could write two in a similar fashion, four over four, plus four over four. And it's not hard to come up with a lot of possibilities for other numbers as well. But what about 200? How do we express 200 using four fours? We're going to use the factorial to do it. So if you want to find the answer yourself, feel free to use the factorial. Here's the answer. 44 times four, which is 176, plus four factorial to give us that last 24 we need to get to 200. And hey, speaking of factorials, there's this crazy thing called a factorial base system. In our base 10 system, the digits represent copies of 10 to the power of 0, and then copies of 10 to the power of 1, and then copies of 10 to the power of 2, and so on. 1's place, 10's place, 100's place. But in the factorial base system, the first digit represents copies of 0 factorial, and then the next is copies of 1 factorial, then copies of 2 factorial, then 3 factorial, and so on. So for example, the number 1200 zero, zero in the factorial base system would be one copy of three factorial plus two copies of two factorial plus zero copies of everything else. So this number would be 10. If we take our beloved 200 in the decimal system, how does that look written in the factorial base system? You could pause and try to figure it out if you want to get dirty with the factorial base system. I'll tell you now though, it is one, three, one, one, zero, zero. That's one copy of five factorial, plus three copies of four factorial, plus one copy of three factorial, plus one copy of two factorial, plus zero copies of everything else. So this is one copy of 120, plus three copies of 24, which is 72, plus six, and then plus two, which totals up to 200. That's a little spooky, isn't it? I mean, the factorial is basically math's form of boo. And when we write 200 in this exclamatory base system, we see the number 13 pop right up. I don't think I would be wandering into the haunted forest with 200 anytime soon. 200 also has this funny property of being what's called an ABA number. This is because it can be written as A times B to the power of A. You could pause the video and try to figure out how. Let me show you. 200 is equal to two times 10 to the power of two. 10 squared is 100, doubled is 200. Another interesting fact about 200 is that it's an example of what we call an unprimable number. This means it can't be made prime by changing a single digit. For example, the number 32 is not prime, but we can make it prime by changing the two into a one. 117 is not prime, but we can make it prime if we change the tens place to a zero. In fact, we can make every positive integer prime in this fashion up until 200. 200 is the very first unprimable number. Again, there's no way to make it prime by changing a single digit. This is easy to verify because if it were possible to make it prime by changing a single digit, it would have to be changing the last digit because if we change either of the first two digits, well, it's still going to be even because the last digit would be a zero, so it couldn't possibly be prime. So the last digit would have to be changed and it would have to be changed to an odd number, but that only leaves the option of 201, which isn't prime, 203, which isn't prime, 205, which isn't prime, 207, which isn't prime, and 209, which isn't prime. So it is the smallest unprimable number. That's pretty cool. You know what is prime is the number three. 
And if we take the number 200 and express it in binary, which is base 2, it looks like this. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. The number of 1s in 200's base 2 representation is 3. And since this is a prime number of 1s, 200 is an example of what we call a pernicious number. That's a number whose binary representation has a prime number of 1s. So suppose you are in the haunted forest with this pernicious character, despite knowing what it looks like in the factorial base. If you try to seduce 200, you might lean in and seductively whisper its full name, 200. Since when written in plain English, 200 has no A's and no I's, it's an example of what we call an aben and an ibn number. Or more clearly, we would read this as an aban and an iban. No A, no I, no problem. We said before how we can take some distinct divisors of 200 and add them together to get 200, which makes it pseudo-perfect. But we can go a lot further than just adding up divisors to get 200. In fact, every positive integer less than 200 can be written as a sum of distinct proper divisors of 200. This makes 200 an example of what we call a practical number. For example, how could we write 15? Well, that's easy, just 10 plus 5. What about 73? 50 plus 20 plus 2 plus 1. What about 69? 40 plus 20 plus 8 plus 1. For, for another example of a practical number that's quickly verifiable, consider the number 6. It has, as its divisors, 1, 2, 3, and 6. And indeed, we can create every positive integer less than 6 by summing proper divisors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. With all of these divisors, of course, 200 is not a prime number, neither is 27. Although 227 aren't prime, they are what we would call coprime, because their greatest common divisor is 1. This means they don't have any common factors other than 1. There's a special function which counts the number of positive integers less than the input number, which are coprime. And that's this lovely function called Euler's totient function. It's written with the Greek letter phi, so phi of n is the number of positive integers less than or equal to n, I think I said less than a minute ago, but it's less than or equal to n, that are coprime to n. For example, phi of 1 is equal to 1. The only positive integer less than or equal to 1 is 1, and the greatest common divisor of 1 and 1 is 1, so they are coprime, and that's the only positive integer less than or equal to 1, which is coprime to 1. For another example, phi of 2. 1 is coprime to 2, but 2 is not coprime to 2, so there's just one positive integer less than or equal to 2 that's coprime to 2. I'm doing a bad job writing these phi's, it should look a little more like that. Phi of 3, this is equal to 2, because 1 and 2 are positive integers less than or equal to 3, which are coprime to 3. For another example, there is phi of 4, there's phi of 5, 6 has a lot of factors. For one more example, phi of 7, for one more example, 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 for one more I guess I have to go recharge it. Well, back to old faithful. So I'm just going to add all 25 of these totient values up and we'll see what we get. Twenty two plus eight plus 20. Wow, look at that, it's 200. So, fun fact in summary, adding up the first 25 values of Euler's totient function produces 200. 
Oh hey, speaking of 200, in the year 200, Diophantus of Alexandria was born. He's a very renowned mathematician after whom Diophantine equations are named. He's most well known for writing the book Arithmetica. This book was absolutely stuffed with math problems, and it will always have a place in math history. Indeed, Pierre de Fermat penned his famous last theorem in a margin of a translated version of Diophantus's Arithmetica. One final fun fact, there is a thing called a Padovan sequence. It's like the Fibonacci sequence, but with a one-term delay. It starts 1, 1, 1, and each term after is not the sum of the previous two terms, but the pair of terms just before that. So to get term 4, I add terms 2 and 1, that's equal to 2. To get term 5, I add terms 3 and 2, that's equal to 2. To get term 6, we add terms 4 and 3, that's 3. Add these to get the next term of 4, then these to get 151, and then these to get 200. Indeed, 200 occurs as the 21st term of the Padovan sequence, and this sequence has a beautiful spiral of its own built out of triangles. You can see those first three terms represented as equilateral triangles with side lengths of 1, and then after those first three terms, the next term is a 2, and we see that triangle there, that 2. And then they continue building out. There's the 2 triangle, and the 3, and the 4, and the 5, and the 7, and so on. It's pretty cool. Anyways, those were a bunch of facts about the number 200. Let me know in the comments what your favorite fact about 200 is, and thank you for subscribing for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, villain arc to keep the cable cut and unset the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fate, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way until the whole blue planet faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so dramatic? Have you even had some imaginary therapy in your head with me where we kill each other with a cordial? And that blade of mine, my state of mind, it just Panama shadow puppets. I'm terrified. I get you love it, but a demon in the dark that was tangled in his image. Got